Hello, I made this little ESC flashing tool the other day because I found myself with a big pile of ESCs that I wanted to flash to BL Heli instead of Simon K. And I've been doing this with an Arduino Uno in the past and it's always a bit of a mess because I have to pull it out and figure out which wires to poke into where. And I find myself referring to my old video that I made last year about this topic using the Uno. And this video, really, there's nothing much more to it than the previous video that I made about this, so I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, all I have here is an Arduino Nano and some LEDs to show what's going on poking out the side and this um, Atmel chip fitting adapter thingy that you can get from Hobby King. Well, I got it from Hobby King. You can probably get it from other places as well. Um, so in the future, all I'm going to have to do is plug this end into my USB and hold that onto the uh, chip and um, I'm ready to go. And I don't have to mess around with figuring out which wires are going to go into where. So um, just a little background. Obviously, most people that are still watching this video will probably know what this is all about anyway. But this lets you program or upload a program onto Atmel chips. In this case, this is a Pro Mini. And you can just hold it on there like that and run the flashing program to upload it with, so you don't need an FTDI adapter or anything and the main point of that is to flash things or up, upload the firmware onto for example I've been doing it with these blue series 12 amp ESCs and you can just hold that on there and upload the program um, to change what kind of firmware is running on the ESC so that's um, what I did it for um, like I say nothing new in this video other than I just wanted to make this video basically as a reference for somebody who might find this useful if they're going to make something like that in the future using this same cable. And I, I guess now that I've made this, I won't be using this video as a reference myself in the future. So I guess it's not, not so useful me, for me this time. Um, but I'll make the video anyway because it might help somebody. Uh, so, um, yeah, basically all the only thing I have to offer for this is that I spent some time figuring out which is which cable. So I'll just show you um, what I started off with. Uh, I cut the connector that comes on this cable when you buy it. I cut that off and I just splayed out the wires. There are 10 wires, but we actually only need six of them. And I numbered these from starting with the red wire. I'm calling that number one and just going two, three, four, etc., around to the bottom. So the last one will be 10. And if we look at the um, end of this fitting, we'll see that we only need six of those. And this is what it looks like when you hold it up to your eye to look at normally. But I'm going to flip this sideways in a minute because when we hold it down onto the chip, that's what the layout of the pins on the chip is. Um, when we press it downwards onto the chip, we're going to be kind of turning it over like that. So this is just flipping it horizontally. And the reason I did that was so that we can overlay the chip pins to the side there and we can get a better idea of which one of those pins is which. Um, so I did a little bit of feeling around with a, um, well I would have used a continuity buzzer on my multimeter but it doesn't have one. So I just set up a little LED to help me see which of these pins is connected to which wire. and. Um, I've just removed some of the labeling on the diagram to the left there so you can see a little bit clearer which pin is which and which ones we need to use. And the numbers in yellow there are the numbers that I had <coughs> had on the wires there. So 1, 2, 3 to 10 there are those numbers there. Um, so we can see that, for example, pin 7 is going to be clock. Pin 9 is going to be MISO, and if we lay that out on the first picture that we had, we'll see that these are the pins that we need to connect to there. Um, so you just connect all of these up to their corresponding pins on your, in my case I'm using a Nano, so I connected them up to my Nano there. But I made a bit of a mistake <laughs> the first time I connected them up. Notice that one of these pins, this one, so the, the text in orange is going to be the pin that you need to connect these up to onto your host Arduino, the programming Arduino. Uh, so this one here is not 
Um, I'll just go back here. This five is for reset, but when we connect it to our programming Arduino, we put connect that to pin 10. And if you look in the sketch for um, the Arduino ISP, um, which I probably should just bring up, um, let's just have a look at that. Whoa. A lot of windows just popped up. Um, so this Arduino ISP is a sketch that you'll be using to upload this. And you can see some explanation there of which pins need to go to where. So slave reset is going to be pin 10. And the reason I say to look out for that is because when I did it, um, where is it? I looked at this diagram and I used the ISP header on the uh, on the nano that's the six pins at the end and I just connected ground to ground mossy to mossy five volts to five volts and so on so I connected the reset to my um, the reset on the flashing tool to the reset on here which is wrong so I wasted about an hour wondering why it wasn't working um, so anyway, what else do we have? Okay, so that's all there is to look at, really. So basically, the only thing that um, that I'm showing useful in this video, even though I'm talking a whole lot, is that image that we saw there. So that might come in handy for somebody in the future, hopefully. Um, but I also did want to say just one other thing, um, or two other things, actually. The... Arduino Nano that I used is one that has a CH340 chip instead of, of a, a proper FTDI chip on there. And I'm not sure if that's the reason or not, but I found that once I had uploaded the Arduino ISP sketch onto here and I wanted to use it to flash the ESC, uh, I found that it would not reset the... No, what was it? I think this was being this was being reset when I tried to use it as a programmer. That's right. Uh, so I had to add. You can probably see a little bulge under the heat shrink there. I had to add a 10 microfarad capacitor between ground and reset on here, just so that when the when the programmer starts to try and upload, it doesn't reset this Arduino. This Arduino stays unreset, and the program it will um, accept the program being uploaded to the slave like that. Uh, so you may have to put a 10 microfarad capacitor on there, but not so fast. Uh, you might want to also not heat shrink everything up like I did until you have done one other thing. And one other reason that I wanted to do this was because I wanted to use the BL Heli interface with this. And if you come into the BL Heli program, you'll see uh, make interfaces. So you can actually upload the Arduino ISP sketch from here so you don't need the Arduino IDE at all which is quite nice so you can select the type of Arduino you have and speed and so on and which type of program you want to make it uh, I think it'd be this one wouldn't it Arduino ISP programmer yeah so you can um, upload the sketch that you need onto your uh, host or your master Arduino from here but you can only do that if you don't have this capacitor on there yet so um, one thing that I, I, I struck when I did this was I, I uploaded the sketch on there from the um, Arduino IDE's default one this one that we just looked at so I uploaded that and then I checked that it worked and then I um, put the capacitor on there and heat shrinked everything up then I came to try and um, use it with the BL Heli and unfortunately let me just plug this in so we can see what the lights do and the lights are gonna flash a little bit like that so you can see that one of them is uh, let's get this out of the way so that one of them is doing that uh, heartbeat thingy Unfortunately, you can't see it from the side very well. <laughs> so I would have probably used one of these other ES, uh, 
LEDs which can be seen quite well from the side. So that's what you see when it, uh, when it starts up. By the way, if you want to get uh, a pulsing display like that, you need to use one of the PWM pins here. So I've, I actually undid this heat shrink once and then fixed it so that I could get that proper pulsing because I was just using any old pins on there, just the digital pins. But if you use a digital pin for the one that's supposed to be pulsing like that, all it does is turn off and on, which is not quite so cool. Anyway, this pulsing is how it's supposed to look. Um, so what I did next was I got my ESC and I tried to flash BL Heli using the BL Heli suite. So to do that you come back to this tab and you select Atmel ISP interface, the bottom one. And then that will bring up this little bit at the bottom where you can select Arduino ISP and COM5, yep, and the board rate. And I thought, great, let's let's do some flashing. So I put this on here. Um, let me just. And I've got a bit of a problem because it says, hold that on there, and I flash it. don't think I'm holding it on properly. All right, that's that's what you get if you're not holding it on properly. Oh, no, this needs to be reset. Sorry, let's try that again. Somewhere along the way we lost the heartbeat on there, so you can see it's not pulsing anymore, so I need to uh, reset it. Alright, let's try that again. Okay, that that's what you'll get if you are holding it on properly. It is actually a bit tricky to hold on there correctly. So, um, I saw this and I thought, oh, well that kind of sucks because I can't upload. So what it's telling me is that BL Heli doesn't want to work with the default sketch that you ha have in the Arduino IDE. So this Arduino ISP sketch that we find in the examples. What the hell? Oh there. So this sketch here is the one that I put on and you cannot use that with a recent version of BL Heli, unfortunately. So it wants you to use the one that it provides. Um, which is a bit of a bummer. So I came in here and I tried to flash the BL Heli's version, but it didn't want to do it, presumably because I have this capacitor on here and I, I didn't want to undo everything. So I just went to the BL Heli uh, GitHub and fortunately on there they have, uh, if you find the right folder, you'll see some pre-built hex files there. So all I did to get this to work um, without using the BL Heli suite is I downloaded, um, where is it, Blue Series, that one there, Blue Series 12 amp multi, revision 14.4, and uh, if you let me just do another quick cut, I will show you the command line that I used to flash this. Okay, so that that uh, little bit of command line there, I, I talked about this in my previous video. This is how I, I did the whole thing. So I didn't, I had never actually used BL Heli Suite in my other video. But this, this should work all right too, as long as we have some heartbeat going. And you find this little thingy and we hold it on correctly. No, we lost the heartbeat, didn't we? Right, sometimes you lose the heartbeat just as you press the tool down onto the chip. But we should be all right now. So let's run that. Okay, it's kind of slow for some reason. See how this is? Um, it's it's just under seven kilobytes, right? It takes quite a while to upload it.
Okay, that's good. Um, and let me just show you something. So this is the Alright, so this one here is, this hex is for the Simon K, the BS NFAT one. And even though this hex is larger, it flashes quicker than the BL Heli one just did. Yep, alright, all right, good. So notice this one is, it's 8 kilobytes, right? And it flashes way quicker than the other one just did, which was only seven kilobytes. Completely beside the point, but I just thought I'd mention it because it was kind of interesting. Anyway, um, that's about all I have to say. Um, yeah, have fun.